Hi everyone, in the last episode we took the plunge and bought this unloved early L322 Range Rover. Yeah, I have to admit it was not in the best condition when I first showed it to you. In this episode we're going to show you how you can renew this Range Rover's drab looking appearance with some quality products and a bit of good old fashioned elbow grease. In episode one, we gave our 20 point checklist on what to look out for when buying an L322 Range Rover. Let's kick things off and show you what we have found. Starting at the front, the bumper is hanging off slightly on the driver's side and both front frog lights have corroded internally. We're actually gonna replace these later in this episode. When we collected the car, it came with two different styles of wheels fitted, but thankfully the original 18 inch five spoke wheels are in decent condition as they suit the car's styling perfectly. We'll be checking the condition of the brakes and fitting new tyres later in this series. Along each side of the car, there is full length scratches and scuffs to the paintwork, but will require a respray to sort out. At the rear, we have completely different coloured lettering and trim compared to that at the front, and a number plate that keeps falling off. Along the edge of the upper tailgate, the paint is bubbling and rust is forming where the rubber seal has started to fail. Now onto the lights. We have a reversing light that is completely broken and missing its lens cover, and a rear light that is filled with water. We'll also be removing the light guards to help out with our 80s vibe and bring back some of the car's originality. A telltale sign of how a car has been treated is to look at the condition of the wheel arches and lower sills. L322s have a common problem across all years where the lower sill around the rear jacking points can suffer from extensive corrosion. You can only really check the condition of the sills by removing this plastic decorative trim. Keeping the wheel arches and sills clean can help prevent them from effectively rotting away. We have bubbling paint on the rear wheel arch just above the rear bumper and this can be an indication of the water ingress from the rear quarter panel windows. Make sure to check out our guide on how to add an extra layer of protection to your rear wheel arches on our YouTube channel, the link is in the description below. Our car was tuned and modified by Overfinch from New and has their custom back box exhaust fitting. This really enhances the V8's burble and is part of the engine tuning package that was originally specified. We are going to restore the tailpipes to showroom condition and replace the rusty exhaust fittings just to enhance the overall look. With early cars approaching 20 years old it's really useful to check the wing mirrors are still fitted with the correct glass. Both of our mirrors have been fitted with incorrect aftermarket replacement glass, such as found on eBay. The L322 makes use of lots of external trims. On this car, the windscreen scuttle panel has faded quite badly and the paint on the bonnet vent has started to chip and flake away. The outer weather stripping and door post covers have signs of corrosion, but thankfully these are only about £40 each to replace from Land Rover, and replacing them really enhances the visual appearance of your car. Under the bonnet of our car is especially grubby with the previous owner not even servicing the car during his ownership. But this is nothing a good engine detail and a full service can't fix. Make sure to subscribe to see how we take you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to service your own L322 Range Rover's engine. Now we've shown you the bad bits, let's get started detailing our car. We're using G-Technic W8 Bug Remover to dissolve the hard deposits left on the paint from high-speed motorway driving. Simply spray on, leave for a couple of minutes and rinse off. For the wheels, we are using G-Technic's W6 Fallout Remover to help lift the brake dust particles from the wheel surface. Spray the product on and leave to dwell. You will see the reaction with the iron as it starts to work. After a minute, agitate the product with a brush to help remove stubborn particles, then rinse the wheels to finish. The next thing we are going to do is use a snow foam lens and apply foam all over the body of the car. All you need is a hot water, a snow foam lens and a funnel. And now we're going to attach this to the pressure washer and have some fun. To tackle the engine bay, we are using AutoGlin Engine and Machine Cleaner, applying plenty of product to help remove the years of oil residue and grime. It is really important to keep fluids away from any electrical connectors, and we are using a small detailing brush to agitate the product to help remove the most stubborn bits. Once 
once you've finished agitating the machine cleaner, we're just going to use a power wash to gently just mist the dirt off the engine. Stay away from any electrical connectors. So we're just going to be very, very far away and we're just going to give it a short blast. Once we've finished jet washing the uh, engine bay, ensuring to stay away from the battery, the ABS module and any other electrical components in the engine bay, um, we're just going to start the engine and let it dry out naturally uh, while just giving it a wipe with a small towel. Now that we have cleaned the whole car, we're going to get rid of all contaminants embedded in the paint. To do so, we use a quick detailer and a clean mitt. And the point is to apply some product and in a back and forth motion go throughout the whole bodywork. And as you apply a very slight pressure on the mitt, you will feel all the contaminant getting away and the bodywork will feel like glass in a minute. And once you're done, just wipe it off. Now we've finished clay barring our car, that's it for now. We don't want to apply any more product because we're going to be taking this to the body shop shortly to have some paintwork done. Our next stop is the interior. Now for the interior of our car, because we've got the vinyl dash and the vinyl door cards, we're going to use the Auto Glim interior shampoo with a magic razor. Now this really, really is couldn't be simpler. Spray it on, let it dwell just for a very short time, and then wipe off with a magic eraser. It brings the door cards up with a nice matte finish and looks brand new. To finish off, we're going to be using the G-Technic products. Starting with the Tri-Clean to clean all the hard surfaces. It's also antibacterial, so it gets rid of any nasty smells. Then we're going to be treating our fabric seats with the Smart Fabric Sealant. Repels water and stains to keep it looking good. And then just to finish off, we're going to be using the G-Technic Perfect Glass products. So let's get cracking. Because our car has been stood for so long with little use and lack of care, mould has begun to form on the seat belts and other hard surfaces of the interior. We're using G-Technic's antibacterial spray to clean and remove this mould. One of the only leather items in this car is its steering wheel. For this, we're using Furniture Clinic Leather Ultra Clean and a small toothbrush. Spray the product on and gently work it into the leather with the brush. Wipe off with a microfiber cloth for a clean matte finish and a steering wheel that looks as good as new. To finish off the detailing, we are giving the windows a clean with G-Technic Perfect Glass. Perfect Glass combines a cleaner and a polish in one to cut through any dirt remaining on the glass after washing. Spray a small amount of product onto a clean microfiber cloth, then work the product into the glass and buff to a smear-free finish. Another popular upgrade for the L322 Range Rover is to replace the side repeaters with either a clear or smoked lens. Now, originally, the lens would have been orange, and because we want to give this car an 80s vibe, we're going to replace our uh, smoked indicator with the original orange indicator. Changing it could not be simpler. All you need is a plastic tool, and then we insert the plastic tool into the side of the lens, and out it pops. Remove the electrical connector and refit the orange lens. Job done. 
previous owner of this car didn't particularly love it and unfortunately some areas have deteriorated one of them is the reversing light here the actual lens has, has, has come away um, and it should actually look like, like this one so we're just going to change this today this just shows you how simple it is actually to work on the l322 at home so to remove the rear reversing light it's only held in place in one small screw remove the screw the light just comes out and the bulb twists and removes. Our new replacement lens, insert the bulb. And that already makes the car look so much better. As part of the repairs I'm doing to our L322, I'm going to be removing the protective light guards. Now, we're doing this for two reasons. One, because we're not keen on the style, and then we're also, we've got to replace this rear light. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get some tools. So we've got a small Allen key, flathead screwdriver, a plastic spreader, and some tape to protect the bodywork. We're gonna remove the light guards. There is six small screws. And that's the guard removed. To remove the metal brackets, we're just going to simply remove the two screws that hold the side of the light in place. Then to remove the side brackets, we're gonna just take some blue painter's tape to put along the edge of the body. And this is just to protect the paintwork. Take a small plastic spreader and we're going to just carefully lever the headlight out. Remove the electrical connector at the back and that is the rear light removed and as you can see ours is full of water. Now what some people do is they drill a small hole on the underside of the light and this stops um, water building up inside from condensation uh, and if the seals have gone it allows the water just to drain off. We're actually going to be replacing this light uh, with the new one that we've got uh, so we don't need to worry about that at the moment. Final step, to actually remove these uh, brackets we just carefully unscrew and remove the clamps. And there's that bracket removed. We're going to reassemble it and then you are going to do both sides and you're going to be able to see what it looks like. Now, to match the rear of the car where we've taken off the light guards, we're going to do the same thing at the front of the car. So, dead simple, same process. We're going to remove the small screws. And already, that looks a whole lot cleaner. The next step is we're going to remove two mounting brackets. But to do that, we need to open the bonnet and we're going to carefully remove the grill. Now we've removed the three screws, we're gonna take a plastic uh, removal tool and we're going to carefully just insert it between the bumper and the grill and press on the three clips to carefully remove the main grill. So there's three, one, two, and three. Carefully remove the sensor from the back of the grill. So the reason we remove this main grill is because we're going to remove the brackets that support the old light grills. Now they're held in place with two uh, eight millimeter nuts on the back, but then we are also going to remove the side light unit here to be able to remove the support brackets. Now to remove the side light, you just put your hand down the back and reach around for a small plastic nut and we remove it and then the light unit is held in place with a clip at the top we just press the clip and the light unit can be removed we're just going to take an 8mm spanner attach it to the nut on the back now we've took the light guards off the car's got a whole fresher look about it. 
The only lights we've got to change now are the front fogs because inside the metal uh, backing of the fog light actually corrodes. So we're going to change those two lights and then that's the entire front of this car finished. So, to change the front fog lights, all you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver and one of these. Now, we use a handy mat, but you can pick these up from any good Land Rover show or any normal car show. Relatively cheap, but worth their weight in gold for a home garage. Now, to remove the fogs, all we need to do is pull off the plastic ring, like so. And then there is three screws holding it in place, and you can see how badly corroded it is inside. Now, unfortunately, um, there is no aftermarket version of these lights. Uh, they are not fitted to any other model of Land Rover or car. So you have to order them from Land Rover. Now we use duckworthparts.co.uk because they are really competitive on price and offer a brilliant service. So just carefully pull it out and you can already see how badly corroded and damaged this fog light is. So we'll undo the electrical connector and that is the unit removed. So I've fitted that new light now, just put the last screw in place, and then to finish off, put the ring back, job done. A popular upgrade for the L322 Range Rover is actually to replace the original Bosch style wiper blades with an aftermarket aero blade. Now some people say this cannot be done, but it absolutely can be. The aero style wiper blade actually stops the annoying knock or bang that happens when the wiper reaches this side of the windscreen. Now, the previous owner of our car actually fitted the aero blades before us, um, but they are not in the best of condition. We actually sourced a new set of blades from a company called boltonbits.co.uk. To replace the blade, simply take a microfiber cloth, place it on the glass. So all we do to remove the old one is press and pull, pull the old one off. Take the new blade, which you'll notice has a completely different mounting style to the earlier blade, which you actually have to remove from the car. And then the new blade simply slides back in place. Job done. And here she is. After all the hours of hard work, cleaning and detailing her inside and out, our Range Rover looks so much better after removing the old light guards and refitting the original indicators. Wait. What's happened? Why is she still dirty? Guys, I have a confession to make. You may be wondering why the Range Rover is still all dirty. Uh, in fact, it is dirty again. Matt and I spent the whole day, uh, you know, detailing it, and it was fantastic. It was completely mint, but I just couldn't resist. So I took it on the local green lanes, and it was a blast, and it behaved fantastically. And yes, it's dirty, but after all, it's a Range Rover, isn't it? Join us next week as we take this old lady into the workshop and see what lies beneath it. Might be interesting. If you like this episode, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.